Recently, I've started looking for people to help me with Webflow development. I've had an experience in the past when I tried to outsource some of the Webflow work that I had to do to somebody else. And because he built it incorrectly, that created a lot of work for me. First of all, just trying to make small changes in the website took me hours until at some point I had just had to create the website from scratch and it was a big website and so I'm quite afraid of giving outsourcing Webflow work right now to somebody who's not very proficient. So I just started out interviewing people and if you've sent me uh, an interview request or, or a request to work with me and I haven't got back to you, it's just, just because I got a lot of emails and I haven't got time to get back to all of them. But I've had an interview this morning which was very, very successful and I, I want to share with you what I'm measuring, what, what's my criteria for knowing if somebody can work proficiently in Webflow and how they structure a website correctly. At least I have two parameters when I look at people's work and I think that it might be beneficial for you whether you're going to be interviewed by me or not into how I think about what is a good Webflow website. So the first of them is structuring well using the right components. So the first thing that I see when other people are doing which is kind of a red flag to me is using the columns feature that Webflow has to create columns. Now this column is super super simple and very very useful and I used to use it a lot when I was a junior designer but since they've came up with the Flexbox capabilities actually Flexbox is so much more powerful that I now find using the columns very very limited and I'm actually very afraid when I see other people are using the columns because with the flag with the columns you can only divide the columns into specific amount of columns and on the specific kind of 12 grid you know layout but with the Flexbox, you can actually do whatever you want with them. You can reorder them. You can switch the order. You can create dynamic layouts. You can do a lot of things. And the most important thing, when you are working with something like the CMS, where you actually you don't really know how many elements you're going to have, it might be three, it might be four, maybe the client is going to add more elements dynamically later on. If you are working with columns, that's going to very, very uh, limit the amount of objects you can put into an array of, of CMS collection. And so when I see somebody who's using the columns, to me that's a little red flag. I recommend everybody start creating columns with the Flexbox. And now uh, I heard that soon the grid, kind of, kind of like a grid element is going to come. So maybe that's going to be the next evolution. But right now I'm much more in favor of using Flexbox versus columns. So that's the first thing. The second thing which I think is even more crucial is how you style your elements and obviously if you know a little bit about how CSS works the styling is cas cas cascading from the top elements um, down below and so when I see somebody who doesn't give th the most basic styling parameter to their body tag for example the font then I know that now for every style that uses a font for every title for every um, paragraph whatever they're gonna have to define the font specifically and if I want to make changes to the font later on in the development process I'm gonna have to change gazillion other styles and that's so not efficient so obviously you're gonna have to style the you're gonna want to style the higher level elements such as body such as the you know h123 tags without creating extra styles on top of them because the mo the the less styles you are able to use that means that it's that your design is more efficient because you'll be able to do one switch and one style and have all the implication of the new design throughout your website so I'm trying to see how people use style. Are they efficient? Do they style higher level elements? Do they just create tons of unnecessary style for every single title so that when I'm going to have to change that title, it's not going to be reflected globally? So the way people use styling is my second indicator. Are they good at building Webflow? Are they structuring it correctly? Are they styling it correctly? And again, the, the guideline here is less styles on higher level elements is better. Those are my general two rules. I think that if you kind of pass this test, it probably means that you can build a pretty good Webflow website and means you're a good Webflow developer. So hope this has been useful for you guys. Tomorrow I'm giving a 
full day Webflow workshop here in Tel Aviv, Israel. I'm super excited about this. I'm gonna go and practice my workshop right now. It's gonna be so intense. I'm gonna try and teach people in basically six, seven hours how to build stuff in Webflow from scratch to understanding, you know, layout, CMS, interactions, a lot of stuff to cover in six hours. So I'm excited for this. I will be sharing it tomorrow, so I'll catch you tomorrow. I'm not